cooking. So a very warm good morning to all the dignitaries that are present in this uh, one day national webinar on duties and rights ethical issue organized by Department of Philosophy in collaboration with IQAC, Government Degree College, Seriamura. On the behalf of the whole team, I would like to welcome everybody in this program. And to start the program, I would like to uh, request uh, our uh, principal sir, chairman and principal in charge of uh, Government Degree College, Seriamura, Dr. Monaranjan Dal, to deliver the inaugural speech of this webinar. Sir, over to you. Good morning, all of you, respected Chitta Professor Chinmoy Rai, head of the department, Department of Commerce, as well as control of examinations, Tripura Central University, respected resource person, Professor Aditya Kumar Mahanti, formerly head and coordinator, Center of Advanced Studies in Philosophy, is the department, Department of Philosophy, Utkali University, Bhubaneswar, Odisha. My dear participants and beloved students, on behalf of Government Diki College Telia Mura and its entire fraternity, I am happy to introduce today's national seminar guest and resource person and we know today Guest come resource person are very expert in this field. Today, national seminar caption duties and studies, duty and rights, its ethical issues. We know duty and rights are correlated. Our speaker will lucidly clarify what is the relation between duties and studies and its background of ethical point. We eagerly waiting their speech. I hope that we everybody will get benefit after their speech. Once again, good morning. Namaskar. Thank you very much, sir. Um, now I would like to request uh, organizing secretary, madam, Indrani Chakravarti, madam, organizing secretary and associate professor, Department of Philosophy, Government Degree College, Kiliamura, to deliver the welcome speech. Ma'am, over to you. Indrani, ma'am, over to you. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning to all. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are perfectly audible. Okay. Thank you. Respected chairman of the session, Dr. Monaranjan Dash, principal in charge, Government Degree College, Telia Mura. Respected chief patron, Dr. Chinmoy Roy, controller of examinations, Tripura Central University, respected Professor Aditya Kumar Mohanty, former professor of Department of Philosophy, Utkal University, Odisha, respected faculty members attending this webinar and other participants, 
and my beloved students. At the outset, I, on behalf of organizing committee, welcome the chairman of the webinar, Dr. Maranyan Dash, principal in charge of our college, who has been playing a pivotal role in organizing a series of webinars by our college. I welcome Chief Patron Dr. Chinmoy Roy, a well-known professor of commerce and controller of examinations, Tripura Central University. He has a multifaceted career in academics and administration. On this occasion, I convey our deep regards to him for his kind consent. We are extremely delighted to have presence of Professor Aditya Kumar Mohanty, former professor of Center of Advanced Studies in Philosophy, Uttar University, Odisha, as a research person in our webinar. He is a renowned professor of philosophy who has experience in working at Tripura Central University previously. He is a recipient of various prestigious awards for his contribution to the field of philosophy and social service. It is indeed a privilege to have your esteemed presence among us. I heartily welcome you, sir. I also cordially welcome the respected faculty members and students of different colleges. The scope of the topic selected for the webinar, duties and rights, ethical issues, may not be only limited to the Department of Philosophy. Academicians, researchers, and students from various disciplines find this to be very much relevant to their daily activities, be it inside or outside of their institutions. Duties and rights are inseparable, yet it may be asked, which is prior? With right, responsibility comes. Rights are more claims, moral claims of individuals recognized by the society. And when an individual performs any work with due responsibilities, he or she is said to have performed his or her duties. So we may define duty as a moral bond or obligation of doing in favor of other person. To be a responsible citizen, we must be aware of the rights enjoyed by other citizens and we must respect them. Once a person accepts a right, he must uphold that right for himself and also for others. For example, right is given to me to listen a music. But if I start listening to music with maximum volume at midnight, this may cause disturbance to our neighbors. Therefore, a responsible citizen must abide by some ethical values while enjoying his or her rights. These ethical values are framed so that there is a discipline in our society. Duties and rights play an important part in the development of nation or the growth of an organization. Rights, on the one hand, give an individual an opportunity to be a part of development process, while duties, on the other hand, make an individual obliged to play a part in the development. As a citizen of a democratic country, we all are privileged to enjoy some fundamental rights. However, apart from these rights, we also have duties, which we rarely talk about. Moreover, responsible citizen is not just about enjoying the fundamental rights and performing the duties mentioned in our constitution, but it is about going beyond those duties. 
we always become very much aware of our rights and neglect the duties we generally have this as a citizen of our country we enjoy rights of a privileged citizen and often we complain the government's inability to provide services similarly in an organization as a employee or a student in an institution we complain about the inadequacies of the system but when it comes to our duties for the nation or institute most of the times we are not aware of them for instance we have the duty of protecting the public properties which we do not hesitate to destroy while protesting or demanding our rights do we really need to do this we have the rights but it is our moral obligation or duty also so that any of our activities do not take any violent nature or hurt any others feelings in demand of our leg legitimate rights we enjoy many constitutional rights and similarly expect the compliance from the government however as a responsible citizen of the country we have to be humanitarian towards our fellow citizen we also have social responsibilities as a good citizen respecting elders honesty non violence are some of the values of indian culture being aware of our rights we must respect these values the topic duties and rights ethical issues is basically about being a responsible citizen it is about deserving first and demanding later the right rightly selected as duties first and rights later everyone has a duty to be a responsible citizen but most of us always think about individual first and society next but when it comes to our rights we talk about responsibility of government organizations and societies john gardner rightly said a nash quote a nation is held together by shared beliefs and shared attitudes that is what enables them to rise above the conflicts that pluck in a society that is what gives a nation its tone its fiber its integrity its moral style its capacity to endure unquote rights and duty go and hand in hand before we complain of the adequacies of the system and complain our rights we must also consider our, our responsibility and fulfill the duties as a famous saying goes great power brings great responsibilities to attain more right it is our obligation to discharge our duties with full ethical values our country has a great heritage of rich culture and social values the government has adopted a new education policy where more emphasis has been given for value based education with ethics starting from primary level of school the webinar on the select selected topic has very high relevance and we hope that with kind presence of esteemed resource persons the deliberations will further enrich us in discharging our duties i welcome you all again and hope that the webinar will be a grand success thank you namaskar thank you very much madam for uh, uh, such a nice speech uh, now uh, move on to move on uh, next i would uh, like to request uh, uh, professor chinmoy roy sir chief patron consular of examinations tripura university tripura to uh, deliver his valuable speech but before that i would uh, like to give a short introduction 
of uh, our uh, valuable virtual uh, Dr. Chinmoy Roy is a well-known professor of commerce in Tripura Central University. Presently, he is working as a head of the Department of Commerce, and he is also the controller of examination in Tripura Central University. Dr. Chinmoy Roy is the first, uh, was the first net qualified from Tripura State. Dr. Roy has started his journey of service as a college teacher in the year of 1994 in Ishwar Chandra Vidya Shagar College, uh, formerly known as Vilonia Government Degree College. Uh, then Dr. Roy joined as an assistant professor in Tripura Central University. After Tripura Central University, um, after joining here, Professor Roy joined uh, in Assam Central University as a teaching professor. During uh, his service in uh, Assam Central University, he passed Tripura Public Service Commission examination for TPS and joined Tripura Police Service as TPS officer. Uh, when, we, when he was serving in Tripura Police Department as a subdivisional police officer in Amarpur subdivision, he again joined Tripura Central University in Commerce Department as a departmental head uh, and uh, center of advanced study in philosophy um, Utkal University. He was also professor and head of department of philosophy Central University, Tripura. He had his post graduation in commerce from Tripura University. He had his PhD from Assam Central University uh, and uh, he has completed uh, his PhD in paper industry. He has uh, to his credit a number of paper publications in national and international journals in commerce and ethical and he has a uh, very much uh, we can say a, a great ethical background. A good number of research scholars have completed their PhD and some scholars are still now currently working under his guidance. And we are very fortunate that today uh, Sir is with us. Thank you very much, sir, to spare your valuable time and to attend uh, this webinar and um, for the uh, daily, um, for, uh, you, as you have, uh, uh, so you are going to enrich us with your valuable speech, sir. So over to you, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Namaskar. So first, I will express my sincere gratitude to the organizing committee and especially to the chairman of this uh, session, principal. Dr. Manoranjan Das for inviting me to share my views. I have very shallow knowledge on this subject. Uh, uh, my specialization is on accounting. I am basically from commerce. So I have chosen to talk about ethics and business decisions, the choices managers take in taking uh, business decisions in every day, what challenges they face, and how they overcome these challenges. Now, to face the challenges of these ethical challenges, in the top surface level, uh, we see the individual behavior or decision making drivers, which is uh, at the top surface, but below that surface level, there is protocols and customs from which this behavior, actions, all these are coming, and below this, uh, protocols and customs, uh, there is ethics and the rules governing the relationships. This uh, ethics and uh, rules that, that govern the relationship, that helps them uh, to follow the protocols and to uh, follow the custom which reflects in their everyday activities or everyday behavior or in decision making process. But this ethics and rules governing relationships also come from the deeply value uh, or the values that are deeply held in belief system about who's what is good and what is evil or what is wrong or what is right but that deeply believes is also come from more deeper level from the world view or conception of reality, how they see the reality, and what are their worldview about the uh, reality. But there are two eyes, left eyes and right eyes. From the left eyes, if you see, we see the rules and guidelines. Uh, that is Euro-Western views which gives us the rules and guidelines. And it comes from the uh, uh, very basic value system, 
from Belur, there are virtues. If Belur is not there, then virtues will not come. And from virtues, if not there, consequences we cannot see and the rules and guidelines we cannot follow. It is the individualistic view, which is Euro-Western view, globalized convergence view. And from the right eye, if you see, we can see there is indigenous or Eastern view of uh, uh, collectivism, which comes from the benefit sharing. The tree protect thing is benefit sharing, which is based on place and context, and it varies, which is why it is divergence view. I will come later on. Uh, globalization and internationalization, how manager faces the challenges. That benefit sharing uh, uh, then uh, promotes this reciprocity, reciprocity between the members because it is collective view or collectivism is working here. And then reciprocity is uh, uh, repositing or the community of knowledge, that communion of knowledge, that knowledge in, in a common uh, basket which is shared by the group in taking uh, decision and that shared knowledge then also promotes a relational accountability. This relational accountability is must because of uh, uh, group and group is working uh, at farm level, uh, then uh, everyone should follow the group norms, group rules, and uh, that uh, relational accountability. That's what left eye and right eye can help us to develop our third eye to solve this uh, all these ethical challenges what are these ethical challenges the business is facing uh, on the one way there is globalization when globalization we want to produce uh, standard product at lower cost in which uh, the trust is on convergence uh, the eerie western view uh, that was that one and in the right, right side, there is divergent internationalization, which adapted optimistic adaptation policy followed by the managers. Uh, they follow the adaptation uh, everywhere the, as, as far as the places they are moving, the business is moving, and the, uh, 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 finding the situation, what is prevailing there, they adjust with that uh, one, and as a result, there is uh concern more than functional specialization structural differentiation they want to follow that one the ethical challenges uh, four five ethical challenges um, business manager faces i will just uh, try to highlight only few of them because i have very shallow knowledge on this uh, subject uh, uh, so i will try to uh, give you uh, or uh, share some uh, views from my side so that uh, uh, first challenge is ethical courses of action. The manager to identify the ethical course of action in difficult gray area situation when situation is in gray area, right, wrong, wrong, right, even right, right, then if right is there, then and they'll be getting the right situation and there are the pressures from the um, competitor or from the institutional uh, side and uh, sometimes manager uh, object themselves uh, from um, implementing that uh, ethical guideline or to follow the ethics uh, rightly Dr. Uh, Joseph uh, L. Uh, Wallargo, Harvard business professor pointed out that it is not the issue of right versus wrong what conflicts of right versus right. And secondly, you mentioned that navigating this situation where the right course is clear, but real world competitive and institutional pressure lead even well intentioned manager or off track from taking decision. So ethical management require more than the dictates of the law and also the signals of the market between these two they have to see and they should integrate that one uh, because sound management decision needs to follow these uh, two and more than one from which that the third eye can develop that introspection and also visualization of the future if both are there uh, from the both side both eastern view and eastern view or 
in genius view if both are there then they can manage that one uh, otherwise it is uh, very tough to follow suppose in uh, corporate social responsibility or in environmental uh, protection uh, environmental accounting that responsibility business responsibility in responsibility discharging this responsibility uh, if we follow only the ethics so only the regulatory part then we will fail to comply or we will fail to discharge our actual responsibility because responsibility uh, includes the ability to respond uh, that firm should be able enough and then they should respond with the uh, situation now to make them able they have to earn profit or make themselves stand up uh, before the society then they can uh, discharge their responsibility otherwise if they fail to attain their ability um, by earning profit uh, they cannot discharge their responsibility in the long run it takes pays no doubt of it because uh, if we are not following Mm-hmm. ethical uh, rules and guidelines otherwise society will come and they will dictate us uh, so better to follow that one that, that, that is on part and then uh, another uh, issue is that uh, few things are immoral uh, and uh, uh, but legal but few things are uh, uh, legal but not uh, uh, moral we were illegal but morally acceptable that uh, example i can give is uh, tax evasion in business situation when uh, tax uh, evasions are there uh, or uh, driving in a situation uh, where uh, this uh, uh, over speed driving where uh, patient is there in the car it is i'm sorry so uh, driving over the speed uh, limit uh, it is uh, illegal but it is morally acceptable in tax evasion also it is um, that behavior or that uh, that decision is illegal but it is morally acceptable uh, so, but a few behaviors are immoral but not illegal suppose when many managers are making budget knowing that it is not expected to be spent even though they are preparing that budget which is uh, immoral but it is not illegal the prepared budget that tax, tax avoidance which is illegal uh, but uh, and uh, sometimes uh, that behavior is uh, uh, immoral uh, not Ill- illegal that that's are there and then in business situation in ethics and uh, uh, there is interest motivating factor there is motivating factor that self interest and altruism self interest should be there because business need to be stand up uh, they should earn profit uh, they would uh, Uh, they will stand up and then they can discharge their responsibility so self interest then self interest in a, in extension uh, if you go move uh, one step uh, forward then we see the enlightened self interest and then altruism or philanthropic activities uh, now they are also um, business need to uh, or manager need to see the uh, uh, optimization point where they can serve uh, better uh, uh, because uh, interest and uh, uh, and ethics conflicts even it is not conflicting uh, uh, then uh, business uh, need to see on that part which is philanthropic but only philanthropic activity cannot uh, help uh, the manager in the long run uh, because uh, it will uh, ruin the business uh, ultimately so they should uh, uh, somewhere balance uh, so, uh, without uh, ruining their uh, company or their career uh yeah, but uh, doing that requires altruism and self interest to be integrated uh and which newton told it as an ethics so that integration also required from left eye right eye and then developing the third eye for proper discharging this uh, responsibility and to uh, follow ethical conduct in applied ethics parts which i am trying to convey and then uh, social contact or uh, minimalist uh expectation uh, from the uh, ethical point of view that uh, social contact the task of the business to identify and make explicit of those uh, things that uh, can uh, in, in, that can be universal uh, but uh, minimalist 
uh, not perfectionist moral principles uh, because uh, if, if one wants to be perfection in, uh, in that particular field, uh, they may ruin their business of area that I already told. So, uh, so uh, it will be very um, um, uh, crucial point where he should stop uh, uh, because he should stand up and at the same time he should discharge his uh, responsibility. That uh, ability to respond, then the authority, then the uh, that his moral that three things. Uh, the, uh, the, th the three things he should uh, optimize in such level that uh, that uh, that will help him to uh, carry out his business. Uh, then there are some ethical dilemma comes in this business. Uh, some are coming from farms level and some are coming from uh, individual level. Uh, so manager need to uh, compromise uh, to optimize uh, the uh, two level. Uh, some uh, uh, situations are there, uh, they will find that uh, they are uh, not following the uh, ethics or they are not following the rules or regulation or the uh, behavior which is expected from him. So uh, they should uh, try to op optimize that level and for uh, uh, optimizing that one, they need to see at least uh, three elements that core ethical values, what it is there, formal ethical program and ethical leadership in the organization. If all these are there, then they can uh, work on this uh, situation and they can uh, deliver the better uh, way uh, to the society and to the company also, to the all stakeholder of the business. <laughs> That uh, right and responsibility, that uh, right and uh, duties, that uh, deontology, that part is very tough to me. Then I have not uh, uh, taken that part on. Uh, I have uh, taken these uh, challenges and what um, uh, practically business managers are uh, facing, uh, and then uh, I will wait in uh, question and session. If uh, there are any questions, then I will try to. Uh, convey uh, whatever I have, uh, my initial knowledge uh, to the, uh, uh, the uh, audience if they ask any question. Uh, so I will conclude and uh, then I will listen from the expert that the uh, Mantisar is there and other experts are there. And then uh, uh, if there is question, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Namaskar to all. Uh, my is complete. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very, uh, very, very much for this uh, enriching speech. And after that, uh, I would like to request uh, our uh, resource person, Professor Aditya Kumar Mohanti, retired professor and coordinator, CASH Department of Philosophy, Uttar University. But before moving on, I would like to say something about sir. I would like to give his short introduction. Prof uh, Dr. Aditya Kumar Mohanti was formerly professor and head center of advanced study in philosophy, Uttal University. He was also professor and head of the department of philosophy. Uh, he graduated from BG, BGB, uh, BGB College, uh, Bhuvaneshwar, and was a uh, topper in the university in philosophy honors in the year 1974. He had his post graduation in philosophy from Uttal University, Bhuvaneshwar and received the university gold medal in 1976 for occupying the first position in MA philosophy. He has the rare distinction of graduating uh, simultaneously in philosophy honors and English honors at the same time. He had his uh, MPhil and PhD from uh, N. Nehu, Shillong and completed his PhD thesis in record time of four uh, months. Dr. Mohanti obtained his uh, delete, uh, degree from Utkal University in the year 2006. Uh, he has, um, in his credit, he has a number of 14 number of books and a number of research publications in Indian philosophy, uh, ethics, and religion. The, his published books uh, may include Knowable and the Sable, the Upanishads, um, Rediscovered, Philosophy of Value, Call of Masiha, Dharma, Comparative Religion, uh, Comparative Religion, Karma, Concepts and Issues in Indian Philosophy, and etc. Uh, so uh, uh, at present, uh, uh, sir has uh, uh, he has been awarded his excellency award, excellency award in 2006 in the field of social action. He has also got gold medal for social service, uh, Rotary Award for working for the underprivileged, Pratibha uh, Samman and the uh, Indra. Uh, I think it's uh, 
इंद्र द्युम्न इंद्र द्युम्न अवार्ड इन सोशल वर्क इन 2009 समाज रत्न अवार्ड इन 2013 एंड सरस्वती सम्मान 2013 एंड आर आर मेमोरियल सर्विस अवार्ड इन 2014 ही इज द फाउंडर चेयरमैन ऑफ रावा एकेडमी व्हिच रन्स अ नेटवर्क ऑफ चिल्ड्रन होम्स अक्रॉस द स्टेट ऑफ ओडिशा devoted to the rehabilitation of deserted un uh, unclaimed parentless destitute children 500 unclaimed parentless destitute children are getting their proper fooding lodging and education under the leadership of professor mohanty presently he is a member of global advisory committee of renesa universal and engaged in research and application of microvita so uh, sir uh, we uh, we are very fortunate here that uh, you are here with us and uh, we are all are very excited uh, to uh, hear uh, from you sir so over to you sir and thank you very much uh, sir for being here with us sir over to you namaskar uh, to all of you um what should i say if you say that you are fortunate to have me as part of this academic event i should say that i feel privileged and honored to be with you in your midst today for the seminar on rights and duties now the fundamentals about rights and duties have been have already been spelled out by uh, dr chakravarti and dr chinmay ji and dr manoranjan in one way or the other now i would try my humble best to dwell upon the notion of rights and duties because that is what really sets clarity gives us clarity about the concepts often what happens is if you are confused about certain notions and concept or concepts then you we talk at cross purposes so to begin with we have to have a clarity about what the concepts are how are they related can the concepts of right be extended beyond human domain in other words can you speak in terms of the rights of the plants to grow even extending it further can you say that even the rivers have also right to flow unobstructed the oceans have the right to remain unpolluted can the can the notion of right be extended to animals and plants and the flora and fauna and even the so called inanimate things in the state of nature perhaps you know that in some countries there is an effort to enact to have enactment in respect of the rights of the rivers and oceans right of the forest so we will try to address this concept try to understand the concept against this canvas what is right what is duty given the fact that human beings have right in relation to each other and duties in relation to each other can the notion be extended to the non humans and the so called inanimate objects friends first of all let us settle down in favor of certain basics about rights and duties first of all we have to keep it uppermost in our mind that rights and duties presuppose a collective body means if there are only, only one human being the concept of right and duty would be meaningless because when you speak of duty of a teacher it is always meaningful in relation to the students if a teacher has a duty to teach the students have a right to be taught so the duty of a teacher follows from the right holder here the students the duty of a civil society follows from the right of its citizens of the members of the civil society that's as clear as that so duty is meaningful if you exercise a duty exercise duty in relation to y and if y has a right right it has a right in relation to x so they presuppose 
a collective existence. Now, what is a right, really? Right is something which one is entitled to, which is one is eligible to get. Right is something which is due to somebody, which was, is, is, in this sense, it is a fundamental entitlement of somebody in relation to somebody else or a group or a society. If the borders of a hostel have a right, then the superintendent of hostel has the has duty. The same thing which comes as a right to the borders of the hostel in terms of, let's say, supply of food in time, preparation of food on time, a distraction-free environment for the borders to study, uninterrupted supply of water and electricity. These are the rights of borders. So it becomes the duty of the superintendent and that means the authorities to ensure that. So duty, if duty refers to a fundamental entitlement, a right refers to fundamental entitlement, then correspondingly duty refers to the fundamental obligation, responsibility or duty, whatever terminology you use. If right is fundamental, if right is basic to an individual, then the corresponding duty becomes bounden. So, corresponding to every right, there is a bounden duty on the part of the duty holder. So, right holders and duty holders stand linked, connected. There is a connect. Because one is not meaningful without the other. Duty is never meaningful without the notion of right. Because duty of one becomes the right of another. And conversely, the right of one becomes the duty of another. If he employees in an organization by virtue of working for the management or the organization have some duties to discharge, certain bounded duties, some tasks assigned to them, which they are supposed to do, then the management has also the responsibility or duties to protect the interest of the employees. That is as simple as that. That the duty and right imply one another. Now the next question is, of the duty as, some, as it has already been hinted at, let me spell it out a little more. What, which is basic? Right is basic or duty is basic? Which is more fundamental? Duty or right? See, there can be no dispute on this, controversy on this issue that duty is more fundamental than right for one or two simple reasons. Duty is fundamental because if duty is performed, then right becomes redundant. Example, in a harmonious family, neither the wife nor the children, anyone, mother-in-law, father-in-law, they are not conscious of the rights because they are not conscious of the rights in relation to one another because everyone performs the duty. Husband does his duty, wife as a mother plays the role of a mother, discharging of duties of children and our in-laws and all that. So they are never conscious of what is due to them because before their conscience it is given. So if duty is performed, the right is taken care of. Right is taken care of. So duty is more fundamental than sense. Second. Suppose one does not, the, you know, the, the, the same person may have duty and right at the same time. Now, for example, the citizens don't perform their duty. Then they do not have moral right entitlement to claim the rights. So it is only by performing one's duty that you claim one's right. You cannot go on, you cannot go, you know, go ahead in claiming your rights without performing duties. Everyone says that I have only duty, right, that means somebody has a duty for me, but I don't have duty for anyone. In one sense or the other, everyone has a duty for one another. 
no one can be duty free or right free a right free life why because by virtue of her station in life by virtue of her station in life we have certain obligations in form of duties the soul the same woman is a mother of her children the wife of her husband friend of her friend and a neighbor of her neighbor you see the same woman has different obligation in relation to different or pertaining to her relationship with different people the same woman mrs x mother of somebody wife of somebody neighbor of somebody friend of somebody teacher of somebody student of somebody and in different capacities or stations in life she has she is called upon to do many many, many she has many duties so the same person may have different duties in relation to others and may have different rights in relation to others wife has a right to have the protective care of the husband and it is a right in indian society when she grows old she has a right to be taken care of you see she has a duty to her duty towards her husband and also a right in relation to her children that when she becomes old enter into second childhood of life she needs to be taken care of as she used to take care of her child when she was helpless old age is second child so by virtue of entering into old age and second childhood she starts getting certain rights in relation to her children she can't work she cannot prepare food for herself so she has the right to be paid properly so friends the same person may have duties and rights rights at the same time duties of some people and rights and, and this is context dependent no uh, the duties universal no right is universal due to the content of duty and right what i am entitled to the content of right and what i am supposed to do the content of my moral obligation depends on the context the role playing the station in life now the question is though for all practical purposes the rights and duties are relative to the context is there anything which is fundamental can we talk of fundamental rights yes we do talk of fundamental rights the right to survive right for survival right to existence right to speech right to express your opinion freely without any hindrance or obstruction right to practice a religion a belief right to property these are fundamental rights and in a sense in a holistic metaphysical world view as we were talking about you see by virtue of being born into this planet earth we have we have five fundamental rights they are right to food by virtue of being born whether i am capable or incapable whether i am handicapped or able body i have right to live right to food right to shelter i need a roof over my head right to clothing i need to cover my body right to education i need i have right to education now government has an act right to education and right to medical facilities to protect against diseases right to medicine treatment these are the five fundamental rights for every individual by virtue of being or born enjoys that is why whether it is a community or a civil society or a government or an international body it becomes their duty to ensure that no person goes without food because food is a fundamental right no person goes without shelter without clothing without education and without medicine so these fundamental rights also spell out or imply or you know presuppose the fundamental obligations on the part of the appropriate body or society so in this sense we can talk of fundamental rights which everyone enjoys the content remaining the same and the rights which are relative to the context or our station in life now here i would like to underline one very important thing 
that the rights are meaningful only in relation to its violation. I have already hinted at this. If everyone would perform one's duty, then the concept of right will be meaningless. In a society, the citizens will not be conscious of the rights if government gives performs duty. So one becomes conscious of the right or of one's right only when somebody has not performed its duty. That means when the rights have been deprived, one is deprived of one's right. Means somebody has not done his duty, then only become a conscious of right. Example, the right of women, feminist movement, is basically driven or triggered by the fact that women feel that male counterparts have somewhere, somehow, at some point of time, have ignored, have failed in their bounded duty towards the females, depriving them of equal opportunity in religious matters, in political matters, in other, many, many other things. So when women, those men and women, the, in terms of capacity, as you know, they have equal ability except certain fundamental things. So since the women feel that they have been deprived of the rights, the feminist movement has come, has taken momentum. If they would not feel that, that they have been ignored in any field of social religious pursuits, then this feminist movement will lose its content and rigor. It will not be meaningful. So the feminist rights are meaningful because of the violation, whether it is a real violation or possible violation. So right presupposes a conflict model. Right is something which one is driven to assert because it has been, he, has, he or she or a group has been denied. So right is meaningful only against its deprivation or denial by one who, or by the group or the society or a section who have failed in the right, rights, you know, sorry, duties, sorry, duties. If at no point of time, there will be any reason to feel on the part of the women folk or women populace that they have not been deprived. They've been allowed to live and grow with dignity in the family, in the society, in the community, in the polity, in the religious domain, in the social domain, there is no discrimination. Then perhaps the concept of women right would be meaningless. So right presupposes possible violation, actually possible violation or encroachment on the rights. That means one becomes conscious of right only when one is deprived of one's due or right. Now the question is, which is, you know, if you look at the Indian systems, you find that Indian systems, as uh, Chinmayji has, um, you know, hinted at very briefly, cursorily, the concept of right and duty presuppose an ontology, a metaphysics, a worldview. The way we look at reality and place of man therein and the relationship between man and other men and rest of the creation's universe. Now, Indian philosophy, Indian metaphysics, special Upanishads give us a very holistic, complete, exhaustive worldview. What does it say? is, you know, it is said in the whole universe is pervaded by one supreme entity. It means that one who controls, one who controls is also immanent. One who is transcendent is also immanent, controls everything. Oh, sorry, pervades everything. That means that which is considered to be ultimate is also immanent, present, embedded inherent, intrinsic, intrinsically there in every object, you know, not them. Because everything is an expression of one substance, echo motion. I am one, I shall become any. It is as good as the same gold is present in different ornaments. It is the same gold which takes the form of different ornaments. It is the same cloud of clay which takes, may, takes different form of different parts. It is the same lug of wood which appears or reappears in form of different furnitures. 
it is the same sugar which appears in form of different sweets if sugar tastes sweet everything made up of sugar will be sweet since the whole universe is made out of consciousness the consciousness has become many so everything is potential what is your relationship we are kindred because we partake of the same essence beat an atom beat an ant or an elephant beat an atom or a human being conscious human being everyone possesses consciousness because we are different expressions of the same substance whatever is the the characteristic substance will be found in every object suppose the gold dissolves in aqua regia so all gold elements will also dissolve in aqua regia if salt dissolve or sugar dissolves in water then a dull made up of sugar or sweet will also dissolve in water if salt dissolves in water a salt dull will also dissolve in water because the salt dull has all the properties of salt because it is made up of salt so since there is one supreme entity which appears in form of diversity is we have to recognize the fact that though we appear to be different underline what appear to be different a man is different from a mouse an elephant is different from an ant in size and structure and stature but fundamentally we are identical apparently we are different you are a christian i am hindu is a muslim but deep within we are all human beings there is no scientific equipment or diagnostic equipment which can tell by examining the blood or biopsy or pet scan or city scan or ultrasound can say to which religion one belongs or which caste one belongs or which community one belongs friends by looking at your basic ingredients of the body you cannot say whether he is a brahmin or a non brahmin whether he is a christian or a muslim but if you look at the world how we are divided in the religion a big divide a cold war is awaiting is awaiting we forget that we are all human beings essentially identically or essentially we share the same essence everyone is so even in this this world view everyone is potentially divine potentially holy sacred everyone is my kindred because we have come from one source and you are going to the ultimate goal is also same this being the world view what is the ideal society a cosmic family vasudeva kutumbakam is it if you try to situate the concept of right and duty is in this again this canvas then you will find you have only duties only duties when jesus was crucified he thought that it is duty to forgive them it is duty to pray god on his behalf on their behalf supreme act of sacrifice if somebody if are wrong by somebody what is the duty to forgive and forget because to every human to every human so the indian metaphysics or indian philosophy or indian world view does not advocate a conflict model a rightist model it's a duty model why because duty is most basic if everyone pursues the duty for the other if i love a plant i love it to grow to fullness the right of the plant is taken care of so the conflict is a so right refers to conflict model whereas duty refers to a synergistic model a symbiotic model because if everyone pursues the duty the concept of right becomes redundant meaningless or intelligible in a harmonious society a society is completely harmonious or by and large greatly harmonious the concept of right becomes meaningless therefore there is no reason to assert one's right there is no there is no room for a right holder because the right holder is presupposes a duty holder 
when the duty holder fails in his bounden duty then the right holder is there to assert his duty a uh, right in relation to the other so the a holistic cosmology or a holistic ontology or metaphysics implies a duty model you are first of all conscious of what duty you feel that as a mother feels that i have duty for everyone she doesn't expect any anything from the child she goes on doing her duty prompted by the inner call of motherhood the parents who love their children they do their best their duties for the children without expecting anything in return so duty is something that you you feel you feel called upon to do in relation to the other in relation to the other now the very very the million dollar question is can you extend the concept of right to the animals and plants do the animals have right do the plants have rights once you say that they have rights it will imply the duty of human beings because plants you should remember that plants animals are not morally conscious they are morally blank they don't have a concept of duty or right if a calf feeds or if they is sorry if a cow feeds or calves she does it out of natural instinct not be conscious of the duty so their mind is not developed enough to be conscious of duty or right but even then can you say that they have rights philosophers are divided there are many philosophers who said no no they don't have right because they are morally blank empty they don't have, therefore they cannot deserve our duty they don't have a right they have only their existence they owe their existence to human beings in the hierarchy of food chain the lower is to be sacrificed for the higher higher we are the end everything is a means plants and animals live for us they don't have a right they don't have a sense of right and wrong subjectivity as decker would say and subjectivity is central to moral sense so since they lack subjectivity they don't have the right to a, you know they don't have a you know they are not worthy to have any right the philosopher called kant is a great philosopher but he said that only human beings have right because they have reason and non humans don't have reason therefore they cannot be member in the kingdom of ants he said so human beings have rights and duties in relation to one another but there is a very powerful section you know people you know people not only thinkers but activists would say that they have also they have right to existence human beings are more developed doesn't mean that they have only rights they are, they can they have only can live at the cost of others they say that even though they are they, they say what about a child who is born handicapped he is not morally conscious how do you say that the parents have a duty to nurture a handicapped child who is not morally conscious a child who is born mad a insane person a madman doesn't have a sense of duty but why do you put them why do you give them treatment so not having moral sense cannot be a justification for denying rights to animals there are many thinkers like peter singh and others who would say that yes they have capacity to feel capacity to enjoy suffer their feelings like human beings so we have a duty to protect their interest first of all as human beings want to live is a fundamental instinct animals and birds also have a instinct to live no animal wants to die even a plant doesn't want to die without water there are many experiments to show this nowadays they are talking of sociality of plants plants have not only physiology but also psychology there is no time to discuss about it so <coughs> the second reason is animals must exist plants must exist so that we human beings can exist if the last tree is effaced from the surface of the earth man will die of suffocation we need oxygen for survival and trees give oxygen so we are more dependent on animals and birds and on other members of the living community than there are us if human beings will die then the world will go on 
elephants are not going to die in the forest the microbes are not going to die but if the microbes die then human beings cannot survive more than 6 hours so the plants and animals have their right to existence because by their very existence they contribute to the total harmony of which man is a part the cosmos is a harmony where everything contributes to the whole even a blade of grass contributes to ecological balance there is nothing which is unnecessary there is nothing which is inessential there is nothing which is redundant so everything has its place it must exist you know the whole exists and man is a part of the whole if you deprive them of the right to existence then human beings will then human beings will will pay price for it if you clear the if all the forest cover is taken off this is serious ecological problem so at least even if at least for on pragmatic grounds on utilitarian grounds man in if man wants to live he must let others live live and let live because man now there is a realization that man is more dependent on nature or other things in nature than nature is on man third reason now in a family a able bodied person a person who in earns handsome or is earning member has a duty to support those who are not earning the old parents the wife the children's education the person who is ahead of others in terms of money or income or you know being more educated he has the greater duty for others a handicapped child or incapacitated child doesn't have duty for anyone but he has a right and the person who is more developed advanced ahead in terms of education and earning and all that he has greater responses similarly friends if you take the cosmos as a family then human beings are more intelligent more developed more conscious more articulate moral so they have duty for everyone else whereas others don't have duty for them so man being the most privileged in terms of intelligence education has the bounden responsibility of extending the protective care to the rest of the creation because he is head of the family he has to play the role of a steward a mentor a leader a protector not a destroyer so by virtue of being more evolved man has greater responsibility in, for others and what about others in relation to human beings animals and plants they have a right to exist and grow therefore from the right the duty of man follows as i told you that the right holder presupposes a duty holder the right of plant to grow becomes the duty of man to help them to grow in fullness thereby man secures his own existence it has two folds one is a metaphysical justification that everything is my kindred therefore i should take care of them as their kindred second thing is utilitarian justification if i do not take care of them then my existence will be in jeopardy my existence will be at stake if i don't take care of them friends so now the last thing is do the in a so called inanimate objects like the rivers mountains the hillocks right yes because they also contribute to the cosmic harmony there is in this sense there is nothing that in this sense there is nothing in this cosmos which is redundant which is inessential so the inanimate creation in the state of nature as are as much integral part of nature as human beings the flora and fauna now this prepares the this gives the rational prepares the foundation for evolving a holistic ethics a holistic ethical paradigm where we human beings have to decipher has to determine as to well, understand our rights in relation to our fellow men as well as to the non humans so what is the implication the implication is this that man has to extend his love for fellow men to non humans 
That means, as Pierre Sarkar, one of the you know, sheer philosopher of the 19th century says, that the new humanistic love has to be extended to plants and animals. That is called new human, Nabya Manavatabad. Manavatabad. In new humanism, you have duty for humans. But in new humanistic ethics or metaphysics or, you know, social blueprint, human beings have relation to the non-humans as well. So the humanistic love has to be sublimated to a new humanistic awareness where man feels his bounden duty for the rest of the creation. Namaskar. Thank you. Yes. हेलो मैडम आपका आवाज सुनाई नहीं दे रहा है मैडम सॉरी यस मैडम यू आर नॉट ऑडियबल प्लीज Yes. Hello. Yes, uh, I was disconnected for a few minutes. So Okay. Okay, okay sir, you can continue sir. No, no, it's done. I'm done. Okay, okay sir. Okay sir. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your elaborate discussion on uh, fundamentals of rights and duties, notion of rights and duties, and the concepts related to rights and duties. Uh, and thank you very much, for, uh, sir. And there are some questions. Uh, so the session is open for question and answers now. So uh, some questions are there, which I would uh, like to do. Uh, uh, which I would like to throw to the uh, to the persons who to whom the questions are being asked. So the first question is uh, uh, to uh, Dr. Chinmoy, Professor Chinmoy Roy. Uh, the question is uh, that, uh, sir, in business sector, how to make a balance between need and greed? If we go by the fact of India only, then we find that 10 to 12 rich businessmen are holding more wealth than the rest of the countrymen. Isn't it an act of thief? The question has been uh, thrown by Dr. Pranay Dev to Professor Chin Moiroy, sir. Sir, yeah, please. Yeah, sir. yeah, yeah, yeah. So need and greed, need is okay, need is okay. But uh, greed is uncontrollable longing from the sides of the seeker. So from a utilitarian concept that Bentham, so that greatest good for the greatest number, 
so greedy people say so they are not within the purview but uh, needy people are so okay we need we need but uh, i got the sense of his question uh, repository of resources necessary repository of resources necessary for regenerating resources uh, there is no doubt of it um, but uh, the trusty uh, concept uh, should be there that uh, uh, that uh, those who are re Depositing these resources, if they are not discharging this responsibility, the total happiness. What Bentham told the total happiness, the uh, aggregating of this total happiness, and then uh, sharing that one will not happen. And automatically, just uh, if we are not following norms or rules, guidelines or our ethical uh, values and virtues, if you are not following that, that deep rooted thing is. Unseen spirit of world, which is the deepest one, introspection, then it will destroy your happiness. So, uh, uh, everyone, uh, uh, those who are repository of those resources, if they are not following that one, if they are greedy, then automatically they will be ruined up because they will fail to get the uh, true happiness uh, 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 from their uh, own self and also from the uh, society. Uh, so I think Pradipto uh, got my point or any question or if you want more clarification, I can clarify. Yes, sorry, Pranoy, 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 Pranoy. If you have more clarification, I can clarify. If you are convinced, then it is okay. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for, sir, your enlightened talk and this response to my questions. So, yeah, this is okay. The repository of wealth is also needed. Uh, it is required now. Nah, repository of all this required for re regenerating more resources. But those who are repositing more of these resources, if they fail to discharge their responsibility, if they follow, fail to follow their unseen world of spirit, their value, their virtues, and then their ethicals uh, and their, uh, ethics, and then the uh, things uh, which is uh, rules guideline from the left side of the eye what I told and from the right eye uh, that I told that uh, the sharing 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 of the resources which is the fundamental the sharing of resources and from fundamental sharing of resources and at the shallow level accountability relational accountability with the society we are living in the society so as a repository of resources and I, I accumulated resources if I failed to share my resources with the society, then automatically uh, I will fail to introspect me and that uh, total happiness will not come to me. And ultimately in the wrong uh, run, uh, it will be destroyed and uh, society will uh, come uh, with a new regulation, new, new rules or something which will uh, ruin uh, that uh, uh, repository. Uh, so reciprocity must be there. Reciprocity must be there. And, um, uh, and then the uh, wealth uh, which has been accumulated by them, if the thing they are not trusty, uh, whoever uh, that uh, uh, greedy people are there, but they are not necessarily they are greedy. Not necessarily they are greedy. That is why they accumulated so much of uh, resources. Uh, but uh, if their feeling is that, if the things that yes, uh, we are the trustee only of these resources, then uh, optimistic, optimistic adaptation will uh, come. Uh, we, we can survive. We can go for a long run uh, for the future. We can see the uh, new world. And differences uh, uh, in uh, our uh, society uh, in the long run. Uh, automatically, redistribution will take place. Uh, greatest happiness of the greatest number of people that have been thumbed out. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. The next question uh, is uh, for uh, Mohanti, sir. Uh, the question is, uh, Professor Mohanti, sir, the question is for you. Uh, it is also from uh, Dr. Pranay Dev. The question is, in spite of having notion of great ideals in our mind and love to teach those to our fellows, why do we as an individual tend to be immoral in our practical day-to-day -day life, but pretend ourselves as a more rational and moral person than anyone else? Okay, this is a, a very a strong question by people around and a question also we ask ourselves. 
the issue is even if you know what is good why you do not become good that is the issue you know in the, this uh, the famous uh, dialogue between drona and uh, durjudhan durjudhan says when he realizes that he has committed mistakes and the end is imminent he approaches drona he says gurudev both yudhishthira and myself were schooled in the school by i know in the studied under your you know tutelage why come that i know what is good but i don't have desire to be good i don't have a prabruti to be good inclination to be good janami dharma ang nachame prabruti i know what is dharma righteousness values goodness what i ought to do what not to do why but i don't have desire inner call compulsion to do it janami dharma ang nachame prabruti the second part is janami adharma i know what is wrong adharma evil unrighteous bad i also know that but i cannot prevent myself from doing it i cannot restrain myself janami dharma ang nachame prabruti janami adharma ang nachame nibruti this is a this is a eternal question dilemma moral dilemma sometimes people who know morality they are most immoral so what is the issue how to bring about a transition from knowledge to practice theory to practice paradigm to praxis this is a challenge not only for the social scientist but religious gurus as well they know what is right what is good what is divine but if you look at their life they are most on divine on godly immoral how to convert a religious belief into a religious living in other words how to live what you believe from belief to action knowledge to action now one way is this that truth teaches itself if you do not do good you pay price for it if you go on destroying forest then there is global warming you learn from global warming that tree is necessary by committing mistakes if you live a life which doesn't care for values you throw values to four winds then you'll find that you have an unjust society a disturbed society a conflict ridden society then you realize that values are necessary why is it that in business ethics now business ethics is in last 25 years ethics was not part of business curriculum now business ethics is an important part of business studies you'll be you'll know and professor chinmay will bear me out that now in every organization there is an ethics committee in the institutions educational institutions in medical medical institutions in management in your corporate houses there is an ethics committee to ensure that there is no more violation why because we have ignored ethics we have ignored values we have forgotten our duties we have been all conscious of our rights so sometimes now very take a simple example from our daily life if we ignore the rules of health we fall sick and you are more conscious of the health rules so when you fall sick so by this is a nature teaches you by ignoring the values you fall into trouble you learn from it just as a child by putting the hands in the fire learns that fire burns he never take it put it up and again so there are two ways either you try human beings try by having a right time of literature audio visual you know telecast broadcast you know all your books and curriculum you teach our children values apart from skill and efficiency by and large the educational system is skill basic skill centric and information centric but values are to be incorporated why because values are necessary for a cohesive living so either you try to disseminate values is one way or 
if you just as a sick man learns from the learns by committing mistakes a diabetes patient for the last 25 years is best health counselor a old patient is a health counselor because he has learned by committing mistakes so humanity has to learn has to embrace a life of values now there is a thick cemetery everywhere talk of values talk of rights and duties government of odisha is shortly introducing course on ethics for art science and commerce into compulsory subject because somewhere they have felt felt the administration felt that our children are knowledgeable efficient skilled but they don't have a sense of values which is so very necessary in every walk of life in every profession every vocation and avocation so that is another way of you learn by committing mistakes or you become conscious and consensus and try to work for it that's it maya yeah. response thank you sir uh, the next uh, question is uh, from uh, nandita chakravarti madam uh, the question is that uh, to mohanty sir the question is that is there any easy method to feel a person about his duty and his actual rights uh, do you think that human rights and duties should start from school by uh, syllabus and most practically just as i was hinting at there is a realization related realization by the government of odisha where you know i have been some associated to that body my so you see the child first of all learns from parents home is the first school for the child then he goes to the institutions from teachers then there is a socialization the child a good parental upbringing good schooling will definitely produce not only an efficient doctor but a good doctor not only a knowledgeable teacher but a good teacher so the values need to be infused the different ways the stories you read the cinema you see the screen you see everywhere there is an occasion that there is an opportunity to infuse values because values are life affirming you are right the whole system has to revamp not only educational system but religious texts you know all kinds of the political uh, you know uh, teachings or preachings or you know benevolence are to be driven by values then only we can thought, think of a harmonious society and more so the children because child of today is a citizen of tomorrow so therefore they must grow with values not, so that they not only become efficient human beings but also good human beings thank you uh, very much uh, sir the next question is from dr shujit debnath uh, the question is to mohanty sir uh, the question is uh, sir can we say that right is conditional whereas responsibility is unconditional you see as i told you right and duty are context dependent but they are not conditional if children have a right if the boarders have a right if employees have a right this right is absolute for example suppose an employee dies in a workplace it becomes the bounden duty of the management to ensure that he gets compensation so in this sense given a context rights and duties are absolute but a particular duty may not be absolute because it is context dependent but given the duty and concept of duty and right in a given context that is absolute there is no compromise to the extent you compromise you dilute your sense of duty moral obligation and to that extent the right of the right holder is compromised so in a given a context right and duties duties are absolute but a particular duty may, may not be absolute because in a different you know different capacity you have different duties uh, thank you sir the next question is uh, from uh, jacob halam Uh, the question is uh, to mohanty sir the question is the people violate others rights uh, is it because of greed or something else if it is greed can you uh, yeah. throw some you see there are different reasons for which one fails to do one's duty some there are various duties personal social and you know there are various duties for example a person is by nature is hardware this is called hardware flaw by nature one is selfish by nature one is crude so that will prevent them from discharging the duty because in discharging the duty they want 
look at the benefit rights of others but will they, they will always look for the duty for them right preponderance of duty that is why that is why there are laws there are accountabilities you do not do their duty and moreover if you are conscious of right you must be also respect the rights of others it is not that you, can, you go ahead with your rights and ignore the rights of others you must also if you are right conscious you must allow others to be right conscious if others have a right in relation to you you have a duty because they are they go hand in hand they are two sides of the same coin so in this sense uh, it is not not only greed there are many psychological factors social factors which sometimes dilute our sense of duty that is why we fail in our bounden duty uh, thank you sir uh, the next question is uh, from uh, dr pranay dev again the question is how to make uh, philosophy or moral studies more popular than ever before amongst the general masses what kind of duties would you suggest for the different stakeholders of this subject in this regard to promote this studies i to i told again and again that the what one should do will depend on the situation your relationship with the right holders in that context so th that cannot be defined you cannot define duties that is context dependent relationship dependent role playing dependent and about the moral once we should remember that morality cannot be infused to moral talks do this don't do that no not list of do's and do nots they are to be built into incorporated assimilated into our studies into our syllabus into our way of life do's and do nots the social customs and uh, you know things prescriptions and prohibitions so with which the a person grows it is not that you teach something then you teach values no the values that we integrated just as i always take the example of a salt and curry you don't take curry and then salt of extra the salt has to be assimilated to the curry so that the salt content of your body is addressed you don't take similarly the values that were lived they are not to be believed only they are to lived if they are to be lived they are to be somehow integrated to our life patterns patterns of living so we have to find ways and means as to how to make people value conscious so that our children their future generation grow value conscious on ours thank you sir the next question is also from dr pranay dev the question is uh, philosophy is considered as the mother subject and help of philosophy is very much needed to address any aspects of human uh, life uh, intrinsic or uh, extrinsic uh, social or individual but nowadays the uh, students enrollment with philosophy in the higher studies is reducing which will must have an uh, uh, detrimental effect to the holistic development of individual and society so how to address this uh, see yeah, i get i get i get the get the question i'm ready with the answer and uh, hmm. i get the details of the the mindset of the questioner and the content of the question but see now, if you are aware now the uh, for quite some time philosophy is become a compulsory subject for in iits it is not because of that that philosophy is a mother discipline when you say mother discipline it doesn't say that it is superior to other disciplines it tells you about the fundamental nature of the discipline because philosophy is necessary for every discipline because the philosophy tries to make you understand what the concepts are about as we are doing it today what is the duty of a president and rights of the citizens that is the business of political science but the philosopher's duty is to first to understand the concepts which which you operate for example for a quite some time the white people had the misconception that they are superior because of their white skin and negroes or blacks are inferior that is why they are meant to be slaves you see the entire slavery system is based on a conceptual confusion when you understand you have the clarity that we human beings despite the color of the skin have the same ambitions same emotions same instincts and aspirations then this kind of apartheid or kind of a will not you know will not cannot be perpetuated and it has been abolished by martin luther king so we need to when you go to a temple we must understand why i am going to the temple why i am praying he is a christian who prays in the church different from muslims who prays in a sitting posture no what is important is not what po in way, with what postures you pray in what place you pray church or mosque or temple 
but that you pray to get a connect between yourself the seeker and the divine that is more important once you understand this you also you will embrace a christian a hindu will also embrace a muslim as a kindred god is one we are all brothers and sisters maybe that depending upon the circumstances or the family i am born i go to the church and you go to the temple and he goes to the mosque but that doesn't make any difference between among us that should not cause a religious divide that should not create a gap between a christian muslim and a hindu we should embrace each other once you have the clarity philosopher job is mission of philosophy is to shed clarity on these concepts because everyone whether a social scientist or a natural scientist or a mathematician they all is operate with the fundamental concepts so philosopher does a survey by trying to spell out the logic by trying to elucidate the meaning of this fundamental concepts with which the scholars or thinkers or activists they operate so he does service at the source in this sense philosophy can be taken as a foundational fundamental discipline or a mother discipline thank you sir uh, sir last but not the least the question is from my side uh, the thing is that sir when uh, it, sometimes it happens that we are very much stuck with moral dilemma so how to overcome a situation of a moral dilemma um, what is the best solution for that sir You see, when you have encountered a moral dilemma, you need two things to settle it. First of all, you must be rationally awakened. Who is rationally awakened? When you become your reason is awakened, you become consensus. Till then, you become conscious, but a conscious man becomes consensus, Vivek. So when your your decisions, your dilemma is you know tempered with a reason, you find an answer. reason is a search light second you should have a sense of goodness reason tells you what is good and what is bad and your moral sense which is there in everyone somewhere it is dormant somewhere it is explicit somewhere it is relatively explicit that helps you to walk the path of the good by giving up the path of evil so rationality and moral sense these two things that will help you to address or to resolve or solve a moral conflict or a dilemma that is precisely what is done by lord krishna lord krishna was trying to give arguments to dispel the misgivings or despondency or despair of arjun so it was a rational dialogue and whenever there are choices for me whether i do this or do that yes by doing this i become rich but i am immortal i become overnight rich overnight but this is a way No, if I follow it, I suffer. But in the long run, I come to gain. Choice is yours. So the moral choice is a rational choice. So it is only a rationality which has to be appealed to by while trying to while one encounters or when one tries to one tries to come to grips with a moral dilemma. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much uh, for your answer. Uh, It, it, it was really a nice presentation, sir, and uh, the whole session was very wonderful. Um, now, to sum up the session, uh, I would like to uh, start uh, uh, about. Uh, I would like to start with Indrani Madam. Uh, uh, the session has started with the speech of Indrani Madam, who has uh, spoken about the nature and uh, the nature of uh, rights the, and duty. Uh, the uh, Sumai sir has talked about the Eastern view of collectivism. and the communion of knowledge he has also talked about relational accountability and norms and regulation and uh, he has uh, talked about briefly about the ethical challenges which all of us face. madam madam you were not clearly audible am i am i audible ma'am now uh, no 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 it is uh, all right okay uh, so i was uh, i was talking about uh, chinmoy sir uh, he has uh, talked about the eastern view of collectivism and he has also focused uh, on the communion of knowledge and relational accountability he has also talked about the norms and regulations and the he and the main focus is on ethical challenges in his speech uh, next to move on uh, professor mohanty sir 
has talked about the fundamentals of rights and duties and the notion of rights and duties. He has also talked about the related concepts of rights and duties and the extension of notions. Um, so uh, after it was a wonderful uh, session and a wonderful presentation. Now I would like to request uh, Dr. Kishore Roy, um, Assistant Professor, Department of Political Science, to deliver uh, both of them. Kishore, sir. Dr. Kishore Roy. So, Namaskar to all. It's a proud, proud privilege for me to uh, uh, present a of thanks for, the, for this uh, very precious and uh, uh, mesmerizing uh, this national webinar that just concluded, you know, that will be concluded now. So, first of all, I, you know, convey my gratitude to Professor Aditya Mohanty sir, Aditya Kumar Mohanty sir, who had given a very valuable uh, lecture uh, for our life. Not only that is, you know, these are the ethical issues related to our, our life, and I hope that, you know, all the um, audience and even uh, will, 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 will be benefited in their life uh, if they follow these lectures again. And we are happy uh, that you know the, this you know the pool webinar will be uh, you know already you know streaming and, uh, you know through YouTube and it will be uh, available on YouTube later. So thank you very much, sir. And then uh, my honest gratitude to uh, Professor Chinmay Roy, uh, sir is a controller of examination of Tripura University. Sir is also given a very valuable lecture on different issues of ethic, ethics and. Uh, um, you know, ethics related to uh, duties and um, duties and rights of us. So, excellent lectures given by uh, both these eminent speakers. I uh, personally and from the college, uh, our college, this is government degree college, I uh, heartily, uh, there is, you know, convey my gratitude to uh, both of you, sir. Further, I convey my gratitude to uh, Professor Indrani Chukravurti, madam. Uh, who, who actually the who performs the task of organizing secretary of this valuable lecture? So, so, thank you very much, madam. And at the end, I also convey my gratitude to uh, this uh, our uh, Moshumi Baspur, madam, assistant professor in English of Government uh, University who is uh, you know uh, that is you know she she has you know. Uh, maintain the program by uh, by uh, doing all, all the you know by moderating the these programs in a very nice way. It was a very nice you know question answer sessions. Uh, so many questions were raised, valuable questions were raised by the uh, eminent you know very uh, you know these participants, and answers were given very fruitful way. So thanks all of you for attending this program and. For the last, not the least, I convey uh, my special gratitude to our principal, sir, uh, Dr. Munranjun Dash, for organizing these types of webinar. Uh, so, sir, and on, on, on behalf of my college and on myself, I uh, thanks all the, all the person who are associated with this, particularly the technical team who organizes these programs in a very nice way. So, again, I thanks to uh, Professor Aditya Mohanty sir, Professor Chinmoy Rai sir, Indrani madam, Moshumi madam, and our principal sirs. So thank you very much again and have a nice day, have a great day. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Kishore sir, thank you very much. Uh, so last but not the least, I on behalf of the whole college and the entire fraternity of management here extend very hearty gratitude to all the speakers for gracing your crucial work and sharing with us your opinion today. It has been my pleasure to host all the participants of the conference and uh, thank you very much, sir. And with this, I would like to end this webinar and thank you all. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
কিছু করবেন না স্যার তাহলে না না কেন স্যার কেন দেই না 